Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Whims of Fate, our random nicheling challenge, where now that we have gotten the very first episode of season three out of the way, you guys know all of the painfully long discussion of the rules and the current tribe status, and if you don't, definitely go check the previous episode, episode number one, in order to learn all about the whims of the nicheling gods, and how the whims challenge works, and who our current tribe leader, Relai, here whose name I can never seem to pronounce the same time twice. Um, Relai. There we go, Relai. Sorry. But if you want to know all of those details, such as what we're doing and what the niche tribe is all about, then check the previous episode and check the video description for a nifty link to our wonderful fan wiki, which is still under construction, so it's extremely dusty. I apologize. But holy Holy Tata, the amount of work that you guys, especially our wonderful patron Callium, have done to the niche section of our wiki blows me away. It is amazing. It has all sorts of cool stats. Definitely check it out. And that is where you want to go in order to keep up with the whims, to keep up with the current tribe size. Spoiler, it's 17. Uh, not just like because it's the tribe size, you know, down to the bottom right, but because that is as many nichelings as are allowed as long as Rila'i is alive. And to keep up with what the tribe leader, even though they're not always leaders, they're just kind of like the nicheling that the gods focus on, but Rila'i is definitely a leader, but you can keep up with what the tribe leader's personality is. And as we learned last time, Rila'i is nurturing, forceful, and inspirational, and she wants this tribe to be huge, to be huge, and to have a little bit more oomph for exploring, and to gather up lots of resources, especially to take care of one another. She is very nurturing, so she really wants to see those food resources go up and she's a little bit aggressive so she's very forceful and wants to kind of push deeper into this jungle even though probably by the time we reach the next generation it will be well over a hundred days on this island holy cow and we do still have a few genes if I haven't assigned really uh la rila her genes which i haven't thank goodness we do still have a few genes i want to unlock and because we have to always travel based off of what the dice rolls i'm thinking that we're going to use this generation and maybe even the next to stockpile food and then continue to roll the dice and travel from island to island until it puts us back on another ice island so that we can try to get hammer tail mammoth foot digging trunk and saber tooth fangs plus it's snowing here in michigan today and across most of the Midwest and the United States. So it seems apt, doesn't it? Uh, but we'll work towards that. I guess it'll be quite a while before we actually end up on a snowy island. And we shall also gather around with the other nicheling gods of the niche pantheon and slow down a little bit to enjoy the stories that are unfolding with the many nichelings that we are currently with during this era and this generation of the tribe. Just because we have grand dreams that the nicheling gods wish to see does not mean we need to rush ourselves past being able to appreciate the lives of the nichelings who are with us now, especially when they are still so full of surprises. Like the birth of little Orin! Look at him! So last time, Anglia, who is quite old, she's only got a couple days left to live, gave birth to the final member of the tribe for now, because we're now maxed out at 17. So we would have to release someone in order to have more children. But she gave birth to Orin, who is a toxic bodied, underwater breathing little boy. And I love him so much. I think that he's just extremely charming. And maybe swimming from island to island will be our thing. But I think that he has definitely caught the attention of pretty much everybody in the tribe. And he's all the newest fuss, you know, like, oh, look at the baby, especially with a very nurturing leader. Uh, I think Kiro is definitely also quite interesting, but he is not an underwater breather, and he has, unfortunately, those webbed hind legs. I can't see what kind of legs little Kiro has so far, but I think they're normal. Uh, and so since you can't breathe underwater, Kiro, you're kind of slow, but you can still contribute. But blue, I mean, do we have another blue nicheling on this whole island? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I don't know if the tribe has ever actually seen a blue nicheling. And so that is where little Orin comes in, named after a character from the Aquaman series, just so you guys know. And I think that the whole island is sort of fascinated by his color, because he's definitely the first blue nicheling that they've ever had, uh, at least 
in the current god's memories. <laughs> it may have happened before, but the gods can be forgetful things. Anyway, with that in mind, Relai is still very young for a leader, and she does have that extremely forceful personality and has charged off. She wants to explore these edges that have been untouched for generations, especially ever since we were ping-ponging around this island, doing our best to survive. We haven't seen an ape in a very, very long time, um, and we haven't died to these plants in a very long time, but it could still happen. So some of the nichelings are not quite as forceful as their wonderful antlered leader, and they're a little more cautious with going forward. And I think that may actually include Ronu, who until now has actually been a mate, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Ronu may be Le uh, Larila's father, but I'm not positive. So I think that uh, Ronu actually does not want to follow his mate as she tears off into the edges of the wilds with that forceful personality, her inspiration to explore. And because she's very nurturing, she would call her daughter Larila to go with her. So Larila would cast a glance over her shoulder at her father, who kind of mutters to himself and says, you know, he better, he better keep an eye out on things here. You know, it's important to make sure that, you know, there could be some some roots to dig up. This tree might have some things to collect on it pretty soon. Uh, you might have to call. He'll he'll call. You'll still be able to hear. You'll still be able to hear me call. Uh, I'm sure that's what Ronu is telling his daughter. Like, you'll still hear my call no matter how far you go. And Larila is going to join her mother on the hunt. On the hunt as, oh, look at that. With the reflection in the water. Just like a little dolly moment. Where, there we go. Where Ralila... Why can I never... Rala-i. Rala-i. Why could I never say your name the same way twice? This is so funny. But she is calling her daughter, as a nurturing mother would, to her side so they can begin exploring the edges. Meanwhile, Kravan, I feel, might actually have his eyes on Rala-i. And I don't remember... You know what? You're just Rala. From now on, shorthand Rala. You're, you're a very personable leader, okay, Rala? You're like... Rely? No, 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 no. I'm Rala. Just call me Rala. I'm, I'm reliable Rala. You can take care of it. Like, I'll take care of the whole tribe. Don't worry. So, Karovan here, I think, is keeping an eye and kind of enchanted with the entire overall look of Rala, and I'm not sure if they are actually related, because the Nishlin gods are forgetful things over the months, and I cannot look at the family tree to tell. But I do think he would be kind of gathering a few of these berries and glancing over his shoulder and keeping an eye on where Rala, his very charismatic leader, is going. Meanwhile, over here, we have Rokirta, who is an underwater breather. He is also a fighter, so he can actually... Boom! Look at that! He just took a gigantic jump that probably made Iris kind of glance after her son with some concern. Right off of the top peak. I think he loves diving. Look at that. Did you see that big dive? I think Rokirtha might do some adventuring, maybe over to like these cliff sides in the jungle, where he can dive off into the waterfalls. That sounds like something he would love. And it sounds like the perfect kind of companion for Kiro, who might really appreciate hanging out with a young nicheling his age. So we're going to let Kiro hop this way, past Nugget, who is quite busy gathering up a little bit of food here, and quite slow. Nugget, Nugget doesn't move the fastest. I think Nugget has a little bit of a rotund tummy now that I'm looking at him again. I, uh, not just because he has toxic body, but something about Nugget and the way that it, like, there's not a single fruit on this tree makes me think that he just spends his whole day plucking fruit and eating it, and he has quite the rotund tummy. I would actually love that if you could have nichelings who maybe could overeat and, like, put on a little bit of weight. Uh, that would be kind of adorable. Uh, completely impractical for the sake of the game, but absolutely adorable to think that Nugget likes to stay right where he is. He's not very athletic with those webbed hind legs. Uh, he's a bit of a dainty eater with that little velvet paw and those nimble fingers. And he loves plucking every single fruit off of this tree and maybe even occasionally spicing his food with one of the healing berries, of which we have many actually. 
All right, and Goldfish unfortunately passed away last time. That was quite upsetting, even though I don't remember much about Goldfish. I apparently have the memory of a Goldfish, but not memories of Goldfish, as uh, sad as that is. But Goldfish has passed on. If any of you in the Nicheling Pantheon remember why Goldfish was amazing, because I vaguely remember she was amazing for some reason, then please, please share that memory with us because this Nicheling goddess has forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> and then down here we do have Jip. He is actually quite adventurous and gathering up the coconuts that are over here. And over here we have Tanu, who I kind of would consider breeding, but he does have that uh, deformed paw. So I think he's actually maybe the child of a wandering... I think he's the child of that, that wandering nicheling we had, who didn't have very good like stats, but he was a toxic body. Meanwhile, Siri, uh, Sirius who I remember as being a very important nicheling, is watching over this nest where Angelia is getting quite old. Uh, and as Anna has fully grown, she unfortunately has terrible fertility. And she, and she does have toxic fangs. Do any of our other nichelings have toxic fangs? We might lose toxic fangs if I don't have her breed. Because we don't have toxic fangs yet. The poison fangs. Nope. Alright, so... Is Anna, you almost got yourself released to wander as you would want, uh, to wander at your whim, you might say, but I don't know, I mean, she, you know what, we'll let her go ahead and maybe she'll find some sort of adventure, she'll be sent after Kiro, because I think that she's Kiro's older sister, and Angelia is quite old now, I'm gonna let her get down here and kind of maybe relax by the water for just a second. Not go in the water though, because I don't want her to drown and stay with her child. And Sirius, she doesn't move very fast. And I'm gonna let Sirius kind of just stay close by to help babysit because Angelia is quite old, probably won't be with us much longer. And we have little Orin, the new star of the, the tribe, the baby that everyone is so fascinated by. I imagine he's actually very gentle natured, very quiet, uh, doesn't really know what all the fuss is about, but hopefully he will be an amazing swimmer in the future and guide us to new islands. All right, meanwhile, Rokirku, any bundles? I don't think there's any bundles. Rokirku is keeping this side of the island under watch for us. And up here, we have Anala, and it is actually her final day. So I think that we're gonna have her. I'm gonna have Kuvi come over and clear away these grasses. And she's, oh, <gasps> there's a wanderer! Old lady Anala has found a wanderer in these here bushes. And she also has like stabbed open that plant in her final moments. Uh, so, and she and Kuvi are going to sit here on the edge of this cliff and have a moment to reflect on their life here in the tribe and the fact that Anala really looks like she is from her Seekers tribe. And rest. The scent of a new nicheling is here. And although they don't react too dramatically, I feel that neither of these nichelings would, um, you know, neither of them would give away the fact they have scented a new nicheling afoot. But I think Anala would just glance over at Kuvi, give him a little nod. He would nod back and he would know what he must do to go and find who that scent is and if they are a threat to the tribe. So our powerful five level attack nicheling is about to pass on. But I do believe that we do have really good attack. Eight level attack on Rala. So yeah, I think that I think that Anala is comfortable with her long life that has been lived for many more months, mostly because the Nishling gods were not able to come and check on the tribe for so long. Then most Nishlings, knowing that there is such a strong, strong leader guiding everyone. But alright, that should be everyone. Anala, since it's your final moments, rest in peace. Oh man. That's really potent to just like sit here and look as Kuvi is suddenly alone in the jungle. Rest in peace, Anala. We will try to find that strange nicheling that you scented. Uh, and we'll go ahead and clear this away so that we have found and defeated one of the plants who could have otherwise eaten our nichelings. We don't have any other trail of scent over there. And meanwhile, Rokirko, uh, excuse me, Rokirku 
can gather up these grasses so that we can have a clear line on that. It is Angelia's final day with us, so let's have her walk along the beach with her baby if possible. I'm going to go ahead and destroy this nest so that we can have the resources back because we probably won't need it. I'm going to let Ange Angelia kind of walk along the beach. Cyrus is going to stay here to kind of babysit. Uh, and is Anna can at least gather this. Oh, but I think that would have made Nugget upset. Like, those were mine. <laughs> so is Anna will continue to explore deeper in. Kiro, oh, he wasn't able to catch that bundle because he got too tired. But Rokieta may have just noticed that he might have a bundle catching friend. So it, he's a little young still to go in the water on his own, but he just spotted another nicheling his age chasing bundles and he might want to do something about that. Meanwhile, Nugget, are you gonna are you gonna fuss about that? I don't know what to do with you, Nugget. In fact, I might actually I mean he can just stay here and eat, but that's not very effective. So I may have these two actually leave the tribe. They're not gonna go far. Um at some point. And then let's come over here. I think Iris would be a little concerned about where her son has just run off to. Uh, let's go ahead and have Kirova and grab that nut. But she's got, she's got quite a bit to collect over here. She's quite busy with all of these foods, possibly hoping for another nut collector to help her out. You could come back up here, Kervanro, uh, but I think Kervanro's eyes have actually, his attention has shifted and he has been distracted by the young Rala. And let's see, let's have her daughter run next to her mom. They're right up here to the edges. Rala is excited. Boom! And Rala is now across the way where there is danger afoot. There is danger indeed. Danger plant uh, that needs to be defeated. So I think that, that Rala is very nurturing, but she wouldn't be willing to bring her daughter into danger to show her how to take care of herself with these dangerous plants and to uh, eradicate the threat to the tribe. This plant right here is not currently a threat. Um, and what are you gonna do? Well, Ronu's little bush has just regrown, so I feel like he would spend a lot of time just surveying there. And then if I can actually get Jip, can, can, here, Jip, you're gonna back up. He's gonna be careful with these coconuts, but he might gather up these coconuts. Just, he doesn't have very many moves to do that with. All right, so that's taken care of. Rala is the tribe leader, but I feel like she is also very, she's very ambitious. And she has no problem risking her own life if it means teaching her only daughter how to go ahead and defeat threats to the tribe. So, hmm. Oh no, we had another death! Oh yes, it was Angelia. Angelia has passed on! The elder Angelia has now left us and has left behind her new son, Orin, who is quite shocked by this. Like, to lose his mother is kind of a big deal. Um, and we'll have him gather some grasses. Oh, unfortunately, it didn't work. And pay his final respects to his mother. And then Cyrus... I mean, she can gather not. Cyrus is going to start wiggling this way to gather from the coconut tree. And I guess, Izana, you can come and sit, and I think that she kind of does pout a little bit. Like, she can't move very fast. She's got dainty paws. She's got webbed hind legs. Nugget just chewed her out from eating the smelly fruit from her tree, from his tree. <laughs> and so I think she would just kind of sit on top of the tree trunk and survey everyone. But I don't think it would go unnoticed that she's not really contributing to the tribe in any way. Right now, we have enough food and resources that that's not a terribly huge deal but it's not really something that would go unnoticed either. All right, meanwhile, we're finally old enough. Boom, and boom, to swim over to this side and introduce ourselves to our new friend, Kiro, who is probably very, very excited to have another nicheling his age to hang out with. And we'll see if these two can have any luck fishing up these Razorina, or at least following the forceful personality of their leader and going deeper into the jungle. But I do think that these two young boys wanted to have a friend and they finally found a friend who's a little bit more adventurous than all of the <laughs> somewhat rounded body curvy females with webbed hind legs who don't really hop very far from where they had their nest. Uh, they just, they, they have webbed hind legs. That's a hard life. It's a hard life and it's something that Kiro is trying his best to overcome with very powerful little hops. Meanwhile, over here, Iris is going to destroy this nest just to make sure we aren't wasting resources. 
And then Kravan, I think, would be quite concerned about what the heck is going on over here. Because we're going to have Larila jump over, and she and her mother are preparing to attack. They are preparing to attack this bush. Uh, and that's quite a dangerous maneuver. And I feel like he just couldn't watch this happen and not do anything. So Kerovan is going to rush over to the side to make sure he is seeing this right. The, the leader Rala is trying to confront this plant. Why? They have safety on this half of the island. Why would she do such a thing? So yeah, I think that Ronu is just like that kind of life, not for me. He's just happy to chill right there. Kip is going to gather up what he can over here. There's a lot of bundles I need to get down there somehow. And then Tonu is going to gather up his food there. Oh! And then finally, where oh where has that mysterious scent gone with Kuvi? Hmm. So we leave off with Kuvi, a warrior given, like he literally has like a warrior's mask, but a warrior given the task by one of their elders to make sure that the mystery scent along the edges is not a threat possibly coming from this extremely dangerous looking island to the tribe we will leave off with him today and when we return next time we will see if rala's attempt to teach her daughter larila how to protect the tribe by defeating that their plant happens to go over well or if things take a turn for the south uh, and we'll also continue to try to gather up a lot of food i really am thinking like Oren, you're getting a little older. I think when Rala passes away, we'll see how large a tribe size we're allowed. And if it's on the smaller side, we'll probably grab Oren and we'll grab a few of the others, like probably Lari, uh, Larila, and maybe Rokirtha, and a few of the others, depending on their age. A lot of these nichelings are old, so we might want to have another baby soon. Uh, but we'll grab a few of the others. And if it's like a low number, we'll just head out of here. Uh, which I said we were going to do on day 100. Not going to happen on day 100 now. <laughs> but we'll start our grand adventure because there's better places to gather food from. Um, but man, I mean, this island is where the whims have faced the most challenges that they have ever had to overcome before. So at the very least, I would like to get to maybe 400 food if, if we can pull the numbers up that high before we leave so that we can just island hop our way to an icy island. So that is the plan, but we will have to see what the whims of the gods have for next time. So I'll see you guys then. I hope you are enjoying. If you have not yet joined our niche pantheon, do please consider subscribing. Do please leave a like to leave a pinch of luck to balance out the whims of fate for whatever Rala is getting up to next time. And let me know what you guys think so far. I'm really excited to see where the tribe goes as they begin to develop more personality. And ironically, as it shrinks, then the story will go faster because we'll have less characters. <laughs> but all right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.